And we're, we're waiting on one more, but we're going to get started with that one. Yeah. We have so much to do here. It's crazy, guys. Look, you're already pushing. What are the rules? So I will begin with a couple sort of warm up questions, and then y'all will take over. We'll answer as many questions as we can during the time allotted. Again, let's watch those spoiler questions, watch those project questions, and if we have to read direct questions, we will. We won't get in trouble. But to begin, we love having all of you here in Salt Lake City. Thank you. Uh, what has been your, I guess, most favorite thing about the convention so far, about the city so far? What have you enjoyed? Y'all kept us so busy that I haven't gotten to see much of the city, which is, you know, fine. Um, I've, I've heard for years uh, such great things about this show, and I'm so happy to be invited this year to and find out that if they were all true, <laughs> it was even better than I thought, so thank you. Yeah. 
I almost see a new person like, oh, I like that material. <laughs> that was good. Learn a lot by watching other actors, but you learn a lot more by studying people. Because uh, it's otherwise you're making copies of copies of people. Right. Or, or, or animals, dogs, you know, whatever. Right. Um, yeah. Like I'm gonna, I'm totally gonna play that guy over there later. He's <laughs> <laughs> got something going on. Looks like there's someone new in the room. Oh, You're good. We're just we're just answering questions. I was born in. No, that's not what we're doing. <laughs> uh, so yeah, ladies and gentlemen. If you wanted to share um, something that kind of inspired you and drove you into like voice acting, what what was that? What did it look like? Oh sure, uh, being a child in an adult body um, <laughs> who loves uh, animation and cartoons and laughter and joy. Uh, who feels like it's magic to see a voice you made turned into a person or creature who isn't you. Um, that was something that I always dreamed of, of being able to do. So. Like, it's interesting. 
interesting. Like, you know, you think in voice acting that you won't be typecast in the same way that you might be on camera based on what you look like or what your physicality or whatever. But it, it, it still happens a bit. Like, I tend to, some of you probably know, get cast in these characters that have some childhood trauma. <laughs> you know, some dark secret for two seasons, you know? It's like, I don't know what my voice quality, well, why it says that, but there, I love them, so here we are. It's stuff that is an animation, I tend to play like, just mean women. Which I'm not mad about. Um, and in animation, it's, protagonists, it's all heroes. It's all like young boy heroes or, or girl heroes. Of course, it's kind of mean. <laughs> this seems to learn to real life quite often. Uh, I I go for a lot of gremlin type characters. Um, I think it has something to do with my voice. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, but I tend to do a lot of kids too. And um, bimbos. <laughs> I don't know what, this, what the categories are, but more often than not, it's a weird thing. And like I literally had a director come and be like, "Hey, I found this like weird girl, and I thought of you." I was like, "Excuse you." <laughs> <laughs> I think the last person to speak means everyone else has said all of your thoughts yes. and everything in your mind and soul. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, I, I guess um, I am a little typecast. I think I get cast as know-it-alls on some level, um, whether they're likable or uh, irritating. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I want more dark, I want more dark secret traumas. <laughs> Especially when, but my question is, do you do you know that they are there? Like, because I do a podcast with Johnny Bosco, and he always talks about. It, and he's like, I didn't know who Zuko was. Right. Like, <laughs> I thought he was just a bad guy. I didn't know he had a past. Yeah. So, like, do you know about? You know what I mean? Do you know going in, or do you find out later and go, Oh, that's why he's a jerk. <laughs> that was a really good job, by the way. Honored. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I know going in, but then, or you know, then I find out two episodes in, or and then I go, oh, that's why he was so cocky back in, you know, episode totally. one. Yeah. I love it. So we're gonna start on that side of the room for the next question, and it'll be my last before I open the floor to you guys. It'll be a quirky one. Yeah. What is one must-have essential item you take everywhere on the daily, or that you travel with, and did you bring it to Salt Lake City? Well, of course, I have my lucky pinky splint. <laughs> uh, that's a great question. No cell phones. Uh, that's not the time. Yeah, yes. no cell phones. That's not quirky enough. Um, oh, gosh, that's oh, a yeah, yeah. tough question. Here you go. My imagination. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I bring my invisible ghost friend, Bob. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.
go to him. Oh, I'm Brittany. Awesome. Hi, Brittany. All right, I love you. Uh, my name is David Mizranga. I'm a voice actor. I um, show to Toroki, my hero academia. Uh, uh, Bear told Hooper to talk on Titan. I heard it come again, maybe less. Anyway, um, those are, yeah, those are, those are two. There's some others as well. Nate Song, I guess. I like how the Beatles is just singing really short songs. There's some other stuff. Go, go. Oh my goodness, okay. Uh, hi, I'm Sarah Nanachini. I've been the voice of Ash Ketchum for the last 17 years. Vanilla ice. Or vanilla ice. Yeah, <laughs> I play, I voice their voter 
which was an interesting one. I was like, what do I do with this? So I just decided that he was just like disgusted by his own smell, so he just vomits all the time <laughs> as he's talking. But like, we also are inspired by the, the Japanese language and like, depending on what the Japanese voice actor does. Sometimes Pokemon USA says we want it to be as close to the Japanese as possible. And sometimes they're like, this isn't like this isn't a well-known Pokemon, so let's hear what your spin is. Yeah. So you can take like something that you created when you were a child, like some weird sound that you were, you know, discovered while you were brushing your teeth with your brother or something, and like put that inside some sort of Pokemon. Yeah, which is always fun. Lots of play, right? Yeah, lots of play. Lots just play. play. You can't be scared. Great, thank you. Thank you. Dungeon, dungeon boonie, boonie dungeon, something like that. 
but um, yeah, I, I, I play uh, Lloyd, the main character on that, and I'm really hoping it comes back for a second season because my son actually watched it twice. He's like, Mom, I have a really good feeling about this one. This one's going to be a good one. I have a good feeling. So those are my two. Um, I did a trilogy of three films called Apple Seed, Apple Seed X Machina, and Apple Seed X Machina. I always try to bring that out. Sometimes I'll say that and people are just like, mm. <laughs> um, I love that show. I love the character, the character of Briarios. I got to do the performance capture for the last film, so, you know, I got to sort of embody, after voicing them for two films, got to also put physicality there in a, in a different way. Um, and I love, yeah, I love that character and that story, so I, I, I it's, it's only a certain amount of people that, or certain people that know about that. So that would be one for me. I did the show no one's seen called Legend of Vox Machina. I just oh. Oh. Um, it's been interesting to see how it's uh, what's her here in the life. Yeah. 
parallels to what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah I think, you know, it's rare in any type of acting that you get to spend so much time with the character. And I, the, those are the ones that usually have an impact on me. I mean, Toto my hero, is definitely one of those. I mean, I, you know, as soon as I, I'm in the booth and I'm in that moment, I, I lock into a special place with him, you know? And, and his journey, his perseverance, his ability to kind of stay, stay in the game after what he's suffered and what he's up against. And um, yeah, I mean, there was a moment in season six that we just finished doing that, uh, where he says, uh, well, I don't know, no spoilers, but he, he calls Endeavor something that he hasn't said in a long time. And it was impactful. I, I, I did it, and I was so stoked to do it, and it was in a, a moment of, you know, fighting and drama, and it hit me afterwards, oh my god, I just said that word. So, there's, yeah, uh, that's probably the one of the most impactful for me. <laughs> He's absolutely terrified all the time. And as like a trained stage actor who's suddenly in front of the microphone without the use of like my gestures and my face and everything like that, I shared his terror. Uh, and uh, but like he has to kind of come to grips with his own fear over the course of the series leading up to. And this came out 15 years ago, so yes, spoilers. Like, uh, but like there's a moment at the very end where like you know he's up against this bad guy who says, "You think you can take me down? You don't even have a gun." And he says, "I do have a gun. It's in my heart." And he throws himself at this dude. And that was a moment that I, like, because like, that was one that I shared, like, in the middle of the recording process. I was like, I don't care if I'm good or bad. I'm going to do this. And it was, like, it was cool for me because, like, I, I, I had to kind of grapple with my own insecurities and everything. And it, it really did kind of help usher me into still not caring if I suck. Uh, so that's, yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. Stop. That's, that's, also, that's my new favorite line from anything. It's <laughs> Are there certain emotions that you find are harder to portray through voice work than, say, traditional acting? That's a great question. You, you just made me think of that. Uh, this, this is crazy, but um, I've been in several sessions where I have realized, um, for whatever, some, sometimes it works. Sometimes real emotion in front of the mic, depending on emotion, uh, translates beautifully, and sometimes. Uh, it doesn't, and you, and you have to, I hate to say this, but you have to fake it in a different way for it to sound real. Um, I don't know, I, I, maybe that would be like that. I thought it actually, I'm so glad you said it. I've tried to articulate that before, yeah. and you've never been able to articulate it like that, and that's so true. I feel like a cheater yeah. saying that out loud, but no. sometimes, yeah. It's like, it's like stage violence in films. Yeah. Like, choreographed violence always looks so much better than real. Life. That's the way they're doing it. Right, yeah. And so what's happening? I can't believe you just said that out loud. <laughs> I'm here to embarrass myself. But you know, you fake it until you make it. You fake it, and then suddenly that kind of heightened push into that space can actually get you to a, to a natural place where you're feeling it, but you're also performing it. It's, oh, it's so, so weird. weird. Yeah. 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 I've just been thinking about what to ask, and uh, I mean, there's just a lot I could ask. Uh, but I think I've come up with something. And I think I'm going to get a lot of flack on what I'm about to ask. Blue! Sally. Again? Yep. Okay. To Yuri specifically, uh -oh. other than yourself, what is your favorite iteration of Peter Parker? Oh. Uh, um, you know, it's probably a toss, a toss up. But, well, and, and I think I can choose two because uh, my, my movie, Peter is Toby Dwyer. And my, yeah. and my, my voice, Peter is Jeff Keaton. I was worried. I was worried about that question. Yes. <laughs> I'm in the lead up. I was really nervous. <laughs> Thank you. Good job. Good job. Yes. I think you all are amazing. You've never failed to make anybody happy. I'm just so proud of you guys. <laughs>
question is, is there any music that you like to listen to that reminds you of the roles you played? I'll say every every role I play, I give them a soundtrack. Like I, I, I listen to the music they listen to, and that becomes my warm up music when I'm, yeah. like, when I'm getting ready for the character. Uh -huh. And so, like now, Space Dandy is really into like early '90s hip hop. Um, uh, <laughs> like uh, Aoyama is really into Elton John, obviously. <laughs> every time I think of Luffy, I think of heavy metal. <laughs> Luffy would sing metal, I mean, that would be his genre, because it's like, ah! you know, like, everything is like super, I just love it. That's exactly what I was thinking about for power. Recently I heard Cannibal Corpse, and I got something to reset something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cannibal Corpse! <laughs> There's actually somebody asking Cannibal me. Book? Somebody actually asked me to make a Spotify playlist for what Peter Parker uh, would listen to. And I mean, all I did was basically list all my, you know, like, 90s post-punk, you know, music that, that I still listen to. Like, I try to listen to new music and every now and then something hits, but I usually go back to, to that stage. So, you can, I think you can, look, you can probably search a very long call Spider-Man's Spotify playlist or something. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah for Todoroki, you know, I just listen to, like, Zen meditation. <laughs> So, you know, everything blows up and then, you know. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Next up. Hey guys, uh, my name is Paula. Um, my question for you guys, if someone was going to start voice acting, what would be something you wish you knew or advice that you would give someone else? Learn to act in your own voice before you start fighting with other people's. Uh, it brought your range absolutely. But like, like learn to act in your own voice. I mean, sometimes people don't know what that is, like, and it takes a minute. But yeah, once you can do that, you can reach out. It's a great way to put that. A lot of people get more roles because they're natural than anything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and do commercial work. That's good point. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta fall in love. You gotta fall in love with acting because. Yeah. Um, so much of the time, especially at the very beginning, you're not going to get paid. And even sometimes later, you're not going to get paid. Um, and and you, something besides money has to motivate you. you, you, you got to fall in love with So So act however, you know, just like what Joel's saying. I mean, find, you know, theater classes. If you're at school, find, you know, classes. If you're out of school, you know, local theater auditions or improv classes or whatever. And, and let's see if that's something that you love doing. Because I know a lot of people are like, oh, you know, my friend Samuel has been funny voices. I should be a voice actor. I'm like, well, yeah, maybe, but um, you gotta, you gotta figure it out. Thank you. <laughs> what? Hi. <laughs> um, I have a Pokemon question specific to Miss Sarah and Jenny. Yeah. Um, so we've already established that Ash is on this like eternal journey to become a Pokemon master. Yes. Um, for you. If we were able to somehow glimpse into the future where Ash and his friends miraculously grew up in Canada's, what would that future look like to you? Ooh! Or for me? For you. For me? Yes. I had to get a job, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. You know, I, I, I did jokingly audition a deeper Ash. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't know what it would look like. It depends on how much they would age him up. Um, I, I think it would be really interesting to see Ash and his friends as, as older characters as well. Um, I don't want to speak too much to it because I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. You're going to need your stats. Um, <laughs> um, I think it's a very really interesting idea and I look forward to seeing what happens and I hope I get to stick around. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Speed round! Woo! Also for Sarah and Jenny, um, did you have a favorite season of Pokemon to record? That's why it's my season. Yeah! So, um, first things first, um, I do know Land Clusterous. My partner loves Foss. Very good. And um, I was cosplaying Todoroki when um, I found out my mom's friend no, is close with the voice actor of Endeavor, and I find that really funny. Um, my question is, what advice do you guys have for like actually getting into voice acting and like 
what to look for. Um, get a home studio set up um, and start finding some auditions online. Um, Twitter is a good place to find that even. On X now? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, no. Has a lot of those, um, but also uh, doing demo reels and uh, looking for an agent can help if you're not able to do anything on there. There are specific voice acting classes as well that you can mm -hmm. take, and it's a good way to uh, just learn about what what it is, what what will be asked of you, and kind of a safer place to do that. So I always recommend those. Steve Bradley Baker has a website called I Want to Be a Voice Actor dot com, which is very dear to my heart. It's chock full of awesome information. Also. Allowed every day for five minutes. Yeah. I know it sounds simple, Old but it's so much of yeah. what we do. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. And, and yeah. I saved it for last because I don't know if it weird, but uh, I, I wrote a book with my wife called Voice Over Voice Actor. Um, so check it out in the library or on Amazon. Thank you. Thank you. Loved you as Johnny Kelly and Jojo. That was amazing. Um, so between my hero and Attack on Titan, who would you move to anymore? Just pick one. Pick one. Which one's your favorite? It's like telling us one's gonna die. Uh, <laughs> I like Attack on Titan. I thought mine was gonna die. Maybe I'll just go with Jordan Roki because he's alive. <laughs> For Yuri specifically, since Persona 4 is a very upbeat game, I was wondering, are there any like memorable or funny line scenes or outtakes of Yosuke? I, mean, I don't know about outtakes because because Yo the way what Yosuke is, every line feels like an outtake. <laughs> <laughs> so awkward and ridiculous and funny, and and, I, and I, Yosuke is my broske. I love him so much. <laughs> but, and, it, and he's very close to like who I am in real life, so it's, it's always been fun. But um, I was like, it's, it's like the first line here off screen, like at the, you know, it's like it's when you first meet him, he crashes his bike, he's like, oh, critical hit! <laughs> 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 that's my Yosuke. That's my Yosuke. Oh, man. Is that the quote you write on? 